Uh, hi, my name is Nick Espinoza, and I'm the head of Special Services at Authenticate. Today, I'm going to have a little bit of a chat with Jake Williams, uh, who's a SANS instructor and runs Rendition InfoSec. Well, good to see you again, Nick. Uh, yeah, good to, uh, good to chat again. So, uh, let's kind of talk a little bit about the various data sources that should feed any sort of CTI or open source intelligence sort of um, fed organization, right? So we have the open web, we have the deep web, and we have the dark web. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this, you probably know a bit about this, but there are some kind of assumptions that we have around the value of those data sets. So in my opinion, you know, the open web at the very top, lots of volume, but usually little uh, or very uh, low value. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's some caveats on that, but that's my generalization. Next, we kind of have the deep web, which is a little bit thinner volume, a little bit higher value. Then at the very bottom, we have the dark web, which is kind of a blind spot for a lot of organizations uh -huh. today. And that is very low volume, very hard to find, um, that sort of data set uh, in general. And then the information you get is usually uh, just very, very valuable because it's usually very open, um, very volatile, uh, explicit in some way, shape, or form. So uh, usually a great data set to dig into. Would you kind of agree with that sort of uh, open, deep, and dark web statement? Yeah, I think the characterization, that's very good. And, and yeah, to, to your point, uh, the dark web data tends to be very, very high value. Although uh, for many organizations, it's a big challenge for them to get access to. Yeah, so why is that? Like what, what are your sort of um, thoughts on the difficulty, right? Like uh, obviously there's probably a policy-based mm -hmm. uh, issue there. A lot of places don't want to give their customer or their uh, users access to it. Right. Alternatively, it could be technological, or it could just be kind of training and skill set. So kind of where does it break down for you in terms of like the biggest hurdle? Well, I think there's a couple of things, right? For, for obvious security reasons, uh, we, a lot of organizations simply do not allow Tor uh, right. out of their network. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course, as you know, most of our dark websites, the vast majority all, I guess, by definition, dark websites are, are on Tor. Right. Um, and so if I have an organization that restricts Tor outbound, that mm -hmm. already is a technical challenge. Then we have legal and policy challenges. Many of these right. dark web forums require payment uh, to uh, even to register with. Uh, they require some amount of Bitcoin being transferred. Mm -hmm. And you are effectively, I think you and I can generally agree, you're probably paying a cyber criminal at that point who runs these we try to avoid it, but it happens. We try to avoid sometimes. it, but it, is, it happens. And, yeah. and look, for a cybersecurity firm like like mine, it's a cost of doing business. It's mm -hmm. something that we provide uh, to to clients, right? And, and so we have to have access there. But for some other organizations, uh, they don't want the potential public relations burden of, of that kind of action, right? right? And then not only that, like uh, Tor in its very nature, right, is. Uh, very secure, mm -hmm. it's very hard to audit in any meaningful way, and when you give your folks access to it, they can boomerang data out just as well as they can bring it back in. Um, but let's kind of talk about the value. So uh, I know you have an interesting story that you kind of sanitize and can share about why dark web matters in terms of actually viewing this content um, as someone trying to run a mature um, cyber threat intelligence or OSINT organization, right? So can you share it with us? Yeah, sure. A little over a year ago, had a, a client that uh, basically was doing dark web monitoring. We were doing dark web monitoring for, mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually got a hit on the uh, name of the organization okay. um, and uh, found out that there was an attacker selling uh, credentialed access uh, to one of their uh, databases wow. that contains regulated data. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a really nice find and a very clean find, right? It was huge because it was the only indication that we had uh, that the application had been breached. In fact, uh, we, or the account at the application had been breached. Um, you know, when we first took it back to the client, they said, no, no, that, that can't be the case. We don't have any alarms on our SIM, right, our SIM. And right. we said, well, that's neat, but here's a screenshot of data <laughs> partially awesome. sanitized, right, that, that the, uh, the attacker tried to sanitize away, right? Um, and uh, that ended up being like the start of a huge investigation. And, and I'll tell you that um, as a result of that, we actually purchased the credentials from the attacker oh, to wow. take them off the dark web, at least initially. Um, um, and uh, one of several accounts that the attacker had access to. Oh, multiple accounts. Yeah, so multiple accounts. Wow. But it allowed us to track back how he or how they uh, acquired those uh, mm -hmm. those credentials. Um, and uh, ultimately, we were able to what I'm sure eventually would have been a reportable regulated data breach. <sighs> yeah. Ended up not being reportable. This is a huge success story for the client because it keeps them out of the media. It keeps them out of the well. You get the picture. Right. right? Yeah, that's fantastic. And honestly, those finds occur. Um, with some frequency, right? Like uh, their entire company is built around scraping the dark web mm -hmm. or tipping and queuing analysts to data sources that they might not be aware of, those dot onions that are so voluminous and hard to keep track of unless you're really embedded in those sort of parts of the web. 
It, you know, I mean, we do a lot of this monitoring, and I'll tell mm -hmm. you, it feels like every month there's a new forum someplace that starts yeah. up that I don't have access to. And, and as you know, a lot of this is reputation. Some of you yeah. have to vet your way into, right? Somebody has to vouch for you, right, to, mm -hmm. to even get you into some of these forums. So there's always blind spots there. Yeah. And speaking of blind spots, uh, obviously the tools in which you let your analysts access the dark mm -hmm. whip with, they need to be auditable, right? You need to have control over what the analyst can or can't do. Um, the good news is, luckily, a company like Authenticate or others have remote cloud-based browsers that have access to things like Tor or other platforms that will allow for exactly that. Yeah. So uh, on that note, I uh, really appreciate this kind of uh, back and forth about the dark web and kind of the basics of it. Um, Authenticate, we're running a new survey on cyber threat intelligence and open source intelligence, and we would love practitioners to be able to provide some insights. So uh, at the bottom of this, you should see a nice URL, and feel free to jump in and share your thoughts. Jake, hey, thanks. That was fun. Thank you so much, Nick.